So, why don't you tell them where we're at? We are at, it's not, it's not Giorgio's anymore. It used to be called Giorgio's. It used to be called Giorgio's. We're in Wheaton. Uh, we're meeting today, I guess we talk about that, yeah, we're meeting today with Dr. Ed Stetzer. Gonna talk uh, to him about church revitalization. Man, it's gonna be fun. He wants some, some advice on our Revitalites program. He wants to learn from us. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> we should bring that up. I should be like, so, uh, Dr. Stetzer, <laughs> probably the best way for you to understand church revitalization is to subscribe to Joe's coaching. Revitalites. Is there any left? Ah, oh, it's sold out. Oh, yeah. It's sold okay, out. We'll put a link in there for people to see. <laughs> um, so we're here. We're killing some time uh, mm-hmm. before that meeting and uh, smoking some cigars. And we thought that we would um, share a couple of uh, thoughts that we have about things that we have problems with. Yeah. I mean, well, what, what, what is your problem? Like, what's the big deal? Uh, it depends on the day. Depends on the it day. It depends yep. on the day. Some days I, I have a problem with you. Yeah, there are days that Joe and I have a issue with The first with hour together here today. Wow, you were so annoyed. I'm just, I wasn't annoyed. Oh, you were annoyed I, the moment it? I walked I out was, of my house. Because you sauntered. I sauntered, We yes. gotta go. No, We gotta why? go, you're so, sauntered. So we could rush to sit down? Uh, yes, exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to get where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> you sauntered. I don't care, I just want to move at my pace. Okay, well, move at my pace. Not moving at your pace. Yeah. No, um, I get nothing done then. No, my problem lately, and for some time, and it's been our problem, to some degree, is uh, the whole complementarian issue. No, no, no. We I'm have, sorry. We don't have an issue with complementarian. Compliment, complementarian. That's the issue. Complementarian. Complementarian. By the way, most complementarians can't even spell complementarian. It's yeah. pretty funny. Watch that online. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, John Piper, uh, that article... Um, came out. Um, yeah, we're getting pushback on that one. Yeah, and so we did a, a, a bonus episode where we talked about yep. you know why women should be allowed to teach in seminaries, um, or at least the way that we would conceive of a seminary. And of course, we leave room for there to be seminaries that are yeah. only um, populated by teachers who are mm-hmm. male. That's fine too. But to come out with a blanket statement saying women should not, yeah, um, in general, uh, we, we have a problem with that. So um, we've been getting a lot of questions yeah. and about what we do practically and uh, what our thoughts are on other issues. So we're going to just deal with a couple of those things. Let's do it. Uh, in, t- in terms of like a, the big issue, when you think about what's wrong with complementarianism today, what's, the f- what's one of the first things that comes to your mind? Uh, abuse of it. And what, what do you mean? Well, I think where it's, uh, where it's kind of an excuse for domineering. Right, like in, in it, whether it's soft domineering or hard, you know what I mean. Like, like it's subtle or it's uh, uh, it's out like really pushed hard. Um, I think that's really my issue. Is where kind of for a lot of complementarian, it's like woman be quiet, move to the side. Right, kind of a thing. And it, it, at the very least, it comes off that way. Yeah. And if sometimes it's just pretty explicitly that way, yeah. there seems to be one of my problems with this is that it almost. It, it, I get the feeling that that some complementarians are afraid of mm. of they're so afraid of crossing a line yeah. that in a they, they don't want to disappoint a, Piper in a, or or the team yeah or like the complementarian team and so in like the Pharisees did right they don't want to transgress the law so they create these boundaries that push things way out so they yeah. don't cross over I feel that um, and I think that sometimes we're doing that we're we're, we're, we don't want there to be any transgression of what God says about roles in the in the in the church. Yeah, and so we go to uh, uh, too far. Yeah. in trying to uh, in trying to protect what they think what we think is right, and we wind up excluding people unnecessarily from ministry. Not just excluding, but I also think uh, not equipping. Oh, for sure. Not equipping uh, uh, gifted and called women uh, to exercise the the gifts that God has given them. Right. Right. So, so let's just say on the front end what our view of complementarian is. Mm-hmm. Complementarian, complementarian theology um, and it's like the Danvers statement. I don't have a problem with the Danvers yeah. statement. It's, it's fine. Um, and in general, what, what we see in scripture is that uh, in the context of the local church and in the context of the home, um, there are roles that men and women serve in mm-hmm. that um, that are somewhat distinct, yeah. right? So in the church, uh, when it comes to the office of elder, pastor, um, that is a role that can only be fulfilled by qualified, called men. 
Yeah. Now, so we are complementarian yep. uh, in that sense. Uh, we don't think women should occupy the office of pastor, um, elder. Or elder, yeah. Same thing for us. And in the home, while husband and wife are a team and they have equality and they're both called to serve one another and sacrifice for one another and love one another, um, we do believe that the husband uh, is supposed to be the head. He is, in yeah. fact, the head, whether he recognizes it or not. Mm -hmm. He is the head of, uh, of her, of the home. The scripture says that. And we think what that means is that there is a greater level of responsibility and authority that comes with that role. Yeah. Uh, now that doesn't mean domineering, it doesn't mean that the husband makes every decision, uh, but it does mean responsibility and authority is his role in that relationship. Correct. Now outside of that, that's we're, it. We're, we're, we're pretty chill. But even, even in that, like in the home sense, right? Like, in, it's not a whatever I say goes type thing, right? right. It's, you know, like you said, there's, there's, uh, take the lead in the, the spiritual direction of the home, trying to ensure discipleship, I mean, making decisions, but I don't make decisions in our home without first talking to Michelle. Right. Like, I, we don't first sit down and talk and pray. Now, there have been times where uh, we disagreed on a certain direction, and then we go with what I say. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's a pretty rare occasion. And yeah. there's other times where even at that point, I'm like, you know what? I, 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 I'm struggling with this. Michelle's got a pretty good sense. I'm really trusting God in this. Yeah. Actually, that was one of the things about moving back to St. Charles was that. Michelle was pushing, saying, I think we need to go. And I was saying, eh, I'm not ready for that. So I really owe Michelle. You owe Michelle for the Jofo. Quite, quite, quite a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Jen, that's how Jen and I roll. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing. Because the husband is uh, the head of the home, um, when we say, okay, um, you, your argument is better than my argument. Um, I, we're going to go your way. Yeah. You are now responsible for that decision. That's you can't it. point and go, well, it was your oh, decision. you're the one that did it. Yeah, no, you yeah. are responsible. It's that. So that's our basic view of complementarianism. I don't even like the word anymore. No, it's been, it's it, been hijacked oh and my abused. Gosh. It just because I, got, I, don't, I don't know if there is any other way. It's like the word evangelical can mean anything. Yeah. Now the word complementarian has come to mean something that I don't like being associated with, yeah. though I would articulate everything that I just said as a complementarian, I would rather not. So um, we're still using the term, yeah. whatever, for now. Uh, if you guys can come up with a better term, uh, I'm, all, I'm all about it. <laughs> and then what about, what about, though, uh, women as deacons? Because mm -hmm. that's also getting pushed back right now. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, we're getting pushed back about that, about our view. Not at our church, but online. Online, yes, yeah. not, not at our church. Um, about women serving as, as deacons. I think a lot of people struggle with that because in a lot of Baptist churches, they don't have elders. They have a pastor, so they have one, and then they have deacons, and the deacons function in a position of authority. So there's sort of a hybrid elder, deacon, board member kind of a thing. Okay. And so they wouldn't want to have women in that role because they're functioning as elders. And my, my answer to that is just start being biblical. Um, have elders, have a plurality of elders yeah. in your church that are, that are accountable to the congregation and let them serve and lead, exercise oversight because they have the authority, right? They have the, the calling. Um, but then deacons are um, called to serve. They are servants of the yeah. church and they don't have that elder authority. And so like um, a number of complementarians out there, well-known, including John Piper, yeah. uh, we believe that women can and should serve as deacons. Um, we don't have to get into that whole passage. Uh, I think the passage is pretty clear um, about, you know, the women likewise on deacon qualifications. Mm -hmm. Is it women likewise, which is what it says, or is it wives of deacons, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is more of an interpretation. Uh, we take the view that it's women. So, um, yeah, we think women should be able to uh, serve in yeah. the church and exercise their gifts. And like you said, we actually have to work hard at equipping. If, That's if right. it's the responsibility of the church to equip the saints, if it's the responsibility of, of pastors to, um, to lead the church in making disciples and getting everyone equipped to do their best in the calling that God has in their life, yeah. um, most, most complementarian churches, I think it's fair to say, don't do a very good job of addressing, um, equipping, and then uh, sending out women to do what they're called to do. Yeah, so how, how do we do that? Like, how do we do that over at Redeemer? Because, I mean, I think that's something that we've actually worked through for a few years at, at, at the elder level, kind of discussing um, how can we how can we equip and encourage right. uh, gifted women to exercise those gifts, right? Yeah. So how, how do we do it at Redeemer? 
Um, well, we have that monthly cookie night. They have a cookie don't. night. No, stop it. Then they have the knitting group. Oh, you're so bad. Um, you're so bad. I can't believe you said that. Praise God while parenting your children. <laughs> classes. <laughs> Um, what we do is we have a we have a leadership lab. You're gonna be in trouble. So we're we're, we're constantly looking for people that have a sense of, of calling to leadership in mm -hmm. various roles and ways. So um, whether men or women feel called to write, teach, preach, um, in whatever capacity and calling that is appropriate to them, um, we want to help them. We want to equip yeah. them. We want to give them yeah. training. We want to give them opportunity, and so we do that in leadership lab. So we have women at leadership lab who will uh, preach or teach or. Um, Yep. Uh, give a lecture or deliver a paper, and uh, and then we critique and evaluate, right? We do this for everybody in that context. But then what, how do you deal with a, a woman exercising authority over a man in a teaching context? Yeah, it's, I, our understanding is that the, just because someone is teaching doesn't mean that they have authority. Yeah. The Word of God has authority. That's right. And the elders of the church have authority. That's right. And the congregation has authority. That's you can right. look at it in that way as well. But uh, the person teaching necessar doesn't necessarily have authority, and so, in the context of, you know, outside of corporate worship, we're gathering for a leadership lab, we're gathering for conferences. Yeah. Um, I don't find any violation of scriptural principles to have a woman preach or teach in that context. Yeah. Now, I, I think it's fair to say that most of the women that we are uh, seeking to, to train and raise up, most of them feel mostly called to preach to women. Yeah. They want to address them yeah. and they want to help them become better theologians and followers of Christ. Um, but some of them wind up teaching to mixed audiences in the conference uh, context. My wife and I yeah. have preached uh, together on stage at the same time. Um, and now somebody would say, well, she's under your authority or whatever, like whatever, it's a, it's a conference. Yeah. So outside of the context of the local church, I don't have a problem with a woman teaching. Yeah. Um, and I, I would be ready to, I'm, I'm ready to learn. If she is a good theologian, um, a, a, a good scholar, then bring it on and I'm going to I'm going to download everything I can. Yeah, that's right. Somebody asked us though, well, okay, if preaching and teaching if that individual preaching doesn't necessarily have authority in your church, like if we have a guest preacher come in, mm -hmm. he doesn't have authority, he's not an no, elder. No. No. Right? So <clears throat> um, couldn't a woman then preach uh, at your church on a Sunday morning without violating biblical principles? Mm. What do you think? The thing is, without violating biblical principles, I put you on the spot. I know, I? yeah, you did. Uh, I would say yes. You say, you say they, they could do that without violating biblical yes. principles. My, that's my answer as well. Is technically, I think you could do that yep. without violating biblical principles. I think the the problem is that so many of us that's associate that position with authority with pastoral ministry that it is at best confusing. Yep. It might be a violation of biblical principles. I'm open to that. Um, but then again, we do have people in there that are not pastors or elders preaching Correct. who do not have authority. Correct. So at Redeemer, we don't have women preach on Sunday morning yeah. um, at Redeemer. And uh, we, we, we're trying to be careful. We're trying to be biblical. We're also um, trying to make sure, you know, because like you said, the careful part, because people misunderstand and associate it the wrong way that you know it'll cause division right or yeah it, it would just confuse people like Jesus uh, was always telling people don't don't call me the Messiah don't call me the Christ um, and it wasn't because he wasn't the Christ it was mm -hmm. because it's just gonna confuse people they're gonna have the wrong idea so I don't think it's too much different from that and we recognize that we could be wrong and some of our views here or on a lot of our views yeah. um, but in the end uh, we think that well, the reason we do it the way we do it at Redeemer in terms of Sunday mornings is, number one, um, we have people that are called to preach, and those people that are called to preach in the local church context, they get the priority. We've got to equip these guys yeah. to get into ministry and to get out there. Yeah. So we train them, we equip them, we get them in there. So we really try to prioritize church planting and pastoral ministry uh, so that we can replicate our church. Yeah. And so that necessitates then pushing men to the front uh, for our Sunday morning gatherings. That's right, that's right. So that's our, that's our basic view. I think that um, when we're trying to talk through these issues, I think it's important to, to go back to Scripture and to affirm what it says again and again. Yeah. But I think it's easy, though, for people to take those verses, 
I do not permit a woman to have authority over a man, mm -hmm. out of the context in which it's given uh, for the local church and then applied across the board so that, you know, women should never have authority over mm -hmm. a man. And that, that's, that's, that, I don't think, is the biblical issue. In fact, we have biblical examples of women in Scripture that did have authority over men, um, even in Israel. Yeah. So I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is in the home, in the church. That's right. As authority. That's right. That's where it's limited to qualified called men. Absolutely. Outside of that, we're, we're a lot more easy. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. Cover girl. You know what? I, yeah, I, did, I didn't want to say mm -hmm. it. I didn't want to say it. We're trying to be complimentarian. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to <laughs> soft complimentarian. We're, we're, yeah, we're pretty soft. That's, that's who we are. That's the only uh, way I'll say complimentarian. <laughs> Is, uh, I'm a soft complimentarian. I just say easy breezy. We're easy breezy. We're easy breezy. <laughs> So love to hear your thoughts. You can uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. We got lots of other content coming out, yeah. new content coming out. Oh, April's going to be big. April's, April's going to be huge. Not just because of the conference that's going on. It's yeah. filling up. Register for that. Register for that. But there's going to be some big stuff coming in April. Big stuff, You're man. You're going to like it. Let's do it. All right. What's that? Well, I thought we were going to pound it. Nah, I don't Isn't that, that. going to be our thing now? We're going to pound it when we leave? <laughs>